Remember when you were a kid and you'd turn over a rock or a stick and you'd see a bunch of worms and other bugs crawling around? Well, that's what happens in a chicken yard when you provide them food, water, and a safe place. They're just naturally going to multiply. I need to get this compost here moved over into this compost ring, but this first needs to be moved over into here. It's the old adage, if you build it, they will come. Yeah, there's plenty of plenty of good, rich, organic material in here, which is a great food source for all of these worms. They're protected from the elements, and there's plenty of moisture, so they're naturally going to want to be in this space. I've never put any worms or introduced anything into this yard. They've just naturally decided this is where they like to be because we keep it in a state where they're going to feel protected. We've got night crawlers if you go down deep enough. We've got your standard variety earthworm. And then near the surface, you've got a lot of the red wigglers that tend to feed on all of the, the scraps and things that we bring into the space. Yeah, the temperature in here is, feels like about room temperature, somewhere around 70 to 80 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for these worms to feel very protected and warm and and then they're going to reproduce. Whenever you have worms present, it's a visual indicator that you've created an environment that is going to be conducive to producing and supporting a healthy soil food web. The soil food web consists of the things that you can see like worms and other invertebrates, but mostly it consists of all of the microbiology that you can't see. It's still fairly warm in here, but it's not in the thermophilic range at this point and I'm going to be adding some greens to it today as I transfer it from this location to over there and then I'll place a compost ring around it, cover it, get it back up to its hot phase again. On the inside of this pile where it's actually really warm, worms don't particularly care for temperatures outside of a certain range and so they tend to stay toward the outer side of the pile and they'll work all this organic material. But if I dig out I'm going to start to find worms. Yep, there's some worms there. Got some red wigglers that are starting to, to show up. This pile has gone through uh, an initial phase of at least 10 days in the thermophilic range, which thermophilic is 130 degrees to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I am going to restart this pile, which isn't textbook by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm not in any real hurry to have this come out of here. Eventually this will transition over into this neck of the woods and start migrating its way on out. A good rule of thumb is to keep it in between one cubic yard and three cubic yards. You can go larger than three cubic yards. However, you are going to have to monitor the temperatures a little bit closer so it doesn't get too hot. If you have a piece of equipment, you can certainly go larger than three yards. But generally speaking, if you're turning a pile like this with a pitchfork or doing it by hand, one to three yards is a pretty good rule of thumb. In order for a pile to get hot, it needs a number of different things, one being moisture, the other is the proper ratios of your fuel source, generally speaking, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60% carbon, 40% nitrogen. The other factor that's necessary is insulation to your pile, and that's one of the reasons why the recommendation is it should be a minimum of one cubic yard. You can go smaller than that, however, you're going to have to provide it your own insulation in the form of maybe using a tarp or something. One of the very important aspects of hot composting is making sure that the bacteria responsible for generating the heat has the appropriate amount of oxygen. So as the temperature of the pile begins to fall, I'll take that outer covering of unburned fuel and put it on the inside of the pile in an effort to get that temperature up to the thermophilic range again. It's also really important to make sure that the moisture content is somewhere in the middle, not too wet, not too dry. If it's too wet, you run the risk of developing anaerobic conditions which can develop harmful pathogens or harmful bacteria and too dry and the pile won't even ignite. This outer covering will be what provides the insulation to the material on the inside of the pile and then I'll tarp it once I get it to that hot phase 
and then I'll turn it at least once, maybe twice, keeping it as long as I can in that hot phase. And then I will allow the chickens to have access to this once it starts to come down and it's going to be in a resting phase. I typically run things in here for months at a time before it even comes out. This pile right here is probably, oh gosh, it's got to be, it's got to be seven to eight months old. In order to provide protection for the worm population that resides within this resting pile, I keep it wet, but I also go through daily and fold it back over on top of itself which provides an additional layer of protection from the full-on assault that is going to occur when I let these chickens out. They will be able to go through and work and eat worms at their leisure, but they'll never completely get to the bottom of this pile. And so there's always a healthy worm population residing within it. I just reintroduced about 11 birds into the yard this morning. And so they're kind of feeling themselves out to find out where the pecking order is. But there's a lot of happiness going on in here right now. Okay, coffee grounds are a pretty good nitrogen source and I'll also be adding some of the livestock bedding that's going to come out of any one of my chicken coops and it's heavily influenced with biochar as well as a lot of their manure from their activity and it's a really good idea when you're in this environment to have some kind of respiratory protection on because of these particulates get airborne in here when you start to disturb them so i've got my n95 approved respiratory protection in place be very high nitrogen but it also is heavily influenced with a lot of carbon aged wood chip that's right outside the chicken coop and you can see the difference in color See if we can't jump start this pile. I didn't intend on today being chicken coop cleaning day, but after having removed some of this bedding, it's about that time. Free shavings that we get locally here and they work great for a variety of different things obviously in the nesting boxes temperature probe in, get it covered up with a tarp. Let's take a quick peek here. First 24 hours and we are only at about 90 degrees. We'll check back tomorrow and see what we got. Forty-eight hours later and we are back in business. So it is 72 hours later. Let's check temps again. And we are sitting right about 140. This pile took a few days to get up to maximum temperature, but let me uncover it and show you where we are at day six. Right now we're sitting at 156 degrees pile is beginning to fall outside of the thermophilic range, which is the lower end, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got a couple of different options. I can either decide to turn this pile by hand, taking this outer covering of insulation and unburned fuel source and putting it to the inside of the pile, or I can uncover this pile and allow the chickens to get in here and start working it. <laughs> 
ultimately before it comes out of here, it's going to be a very biologically active compost that's been worked over by all these chickens, heavily steeped with a lot of worms and a lot of biochar. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.